oh, why did these men do that? They just had nothing better to do, right? They were just, well, they're just these men had inherent hatred in their hearts because they're men. It's that Y chromosome. It's what makes them so hateful and evil and man. You don't think that maybe you fucking provoked them with your annoying ass shit and fuck and, and see that's the thing you fucking like you fucking to it's like, metaphorically you tossed a grenade in their fucking apartment building and fucking waited for it to explode you know what I'm saying now you know what what you did is you fucking took a stick and fucking just just like you just took a fucking stick and just whopped a fucking wasp nest, or you fucking just went up and just fucking ballparked a fucking hornet's nest, <clears throat> and then, and then fucking, like, wait for all the hornets to, like, swarm outside of the nest and look around for the perpetrator, and then go fucking chase after it, and then you say, look at me, there's all these things that are attacking me, I'm a victim, Mer. You did, you fucking invaded the fucking, one of the sacred places uh, of men, which is, t you know, to nestle themselves inside their creation <clears throat> and all that, you fucking invaded something that was uniquely male and then fucking just trespassed and then fucking desecrated it with all your fucking expectations of, of preferential treatment and all this shit. And then, and then you fucking get all pissed off when they fucking lash back. Fuck you, Sarkeesian. You know what? Can you imagine if the reverse would have happened? If, like, you know, some ma if some man would have went into a fucking Planned Parenthood clinic and said that abortion, you know, is harmful to babies? You know, you'd fucking, you'd like, scream out sexism against, you know, and you'd, 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 you'd cry out saying that women's rights were under attack. Fuck you. A home base. The base. Like, is that like Al-Qaeda? Oh, man. Do they have, like, some kind of terror network? Man. And communicate. And this... Where is this game played? Well, the perpetrators turned the entire internet into a battlefield. So in my case, they came after everything and anything that I possibly had ever had online. They also have a home base where they coordinate their raids and work together and communicate. And this usually takes place um, on largely unmoderated, largely anonymous message boards and forums. And so what's she saying there? Oh, because men have privacy and men have, you know, freedom of speech, then it breeds hatred and terrorism and it, and, and it, and it provides for men to turn women into victims. You fucking cunt. You know what? Go fuck yourself. These are places with no real mechanisms for accountability. No, what she's really saying is these are places where, like, feminine control ha has not permeated into. Fuck you. You fucking feminist bigots will fucking destroy every fucking freedom that's meant for society abroad and fucking consolidate it only for women to enjoy and you'll fucking oppress the male gender. Fuck you. So what is the goal? Well, the immediate explicit goal is to stop the villain and save video games from me and my crazy feminist schemes. Because you are fucking crazy, and you are a feminist, and you are fucking plotting and scheming, you fucking cunt. And they tried to do this by silencing and discrediting me and my projects. But the larger implicit goal here is that they're actually trying to maintain the status quo of video games as a male-dominated space. Why? Perhaps to reward men for actually putting forth the effort of actually building up an industry for themselves? Fuck. I mean, come on, you fucking... You're, you're, you're a bigot. That's what you are, Anita. Anita Sarkeesian, you're a fucking hate-mongering bigot. And you hate men, and even more so, you fucking hate yourself for not being up to a man's fucking level. And all of the privileges and entitlements that come with an unquestioned boys club. There it is, right there. She's fucking jealous of privilege. Right there. By silencing and discrediting me and my project. But the larger implicit goal here is that they're actually trying to maintain the status quo of video games as a male-dominated space. 
and all of the privileges and entitlements that come with an unquestioned boys club. Exactly. Right there. There it is. You're fucking enraged that a man would have a space to himself that doesn't include you. Anita, when when are you going to fucking just fucking crack? And when are you going to fucking just snap and become a fucking serial killer? You have so much fucking hatred. You have so many fucking deep-seated in deep-seated like issues. What happened to you? What what caused this? Did 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 I wrong you in another life? <laughs> you know to use the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves expression? <laughs> Bitch, you have so many deep-seated issues, like you won't even fucking confess. So what type of game is this? Well, it's fundamentally a social one. Now, we don't usually think of online harassment as a social activity, but we do know from the strategies and tactics that they used that they were not working alone, that they were actually loosely coordinating with one another. And this social, this social component is a... Well, guess what, Anita? You know what? I'm actually coordinating a worldwide effort to fucking, like, you know, like, put the... You know, to to um, to basically confine the predator that is within your gender. You know, and all I'm asking for is just for men to live their lives without women in there, to not spend their money on women, to not marry, to not date. Uh, and, and you know what? You know, interestingly. They'll mean no more one night stands or promiscuity or any shit like that, you know? Uh it it'll exterminate rape if if my plans are successful. It'll exterminate rape and sexual harassment and all kind of crimes against women. But guess what? You're not gonna like it. You women are not gonna like it because then men are gonna be men are gonna be enlightened and wise enough to fucking like throw off the shackles of the oppression that the female gender desires to impose upon the male gender. You know what I'm saying? Why do you think I call myself manslave? You know what I'm saying? Manslave. <clears throat> right there, that's what I call myself. And, and you know why? Because I chose to call myself that to mock the way the female gender perceives me. Just like my colleague, the disposable human doing. He calls himself he actually created that name for himself. He called himself the disposable human doing to mock and show his contempt for the way the female gender perceives him and the male gender. It's exactly what I do, to mock and show my contempt. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. rape. You know, we can work toward eradicating and exterminating rape, you know what I'm saying? And sexual harassment and sexual assault and all that other stuff, but you're not going to fucking like the result. You know, it's going to come at a fucking price. You know, and, and see, the thing is, and what's demonstrated in this, you know, women actually thrive upon violence. It actually enables them to, to succeed in their manipulation. That's why violence should not be done. That's why as much as Anita Sarkeesian fucking pisses me off, that's why I will never raise a fist to her or any other woman because they win. They thrive upon violence. It's perhaps one of the most successful or even sometimes the only way in which they can obtain and wield their power. We need to fucking deprive them of their ability to collect power like that. You know, we just need to treat them with indifference just like they treat us. You know what I'm saying? Every time they make a fucking advance, we need to either ignore it or make a fucking scene like they do or whatever. But we need to treat women the same way that women treat men. And then they'll fucking learn. You know what I'm saying? Men understand consequences. Men, uh, you know, men understand consequences. Women don't yet understand consequences. Maybe, maybe I should give them a heaping fucking dose. You know what I'm saying? And I am against violence. I detest violence. <clears throat> I don't raise a fist to anybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm against property damage. 
I'm against theft. Um, and basically now I'm against getting in people's pants. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, pussy has been offered to me, you know, back in the fall of 2011. I turned it down. You know, um, it just like, well, back in the spring of, uh, 2012, you know, my former owner tried another fucking scheme, another fucking ploy to get back into my apartment and to live with me again. And I, I fucking sub, you know, I, I, I snubbed her, you know, it's like she, you know, she tried to fucking come in here and spend the night again after I kicked her out. You know, it was about three months after I kicked her out and I'm just like, no, you need to be getting home. Yeah, I fucking rejected her. I fucking rejected that pussy. I rejected access to it. I could have had pussy again. I could have had it at least two times a day. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I rejected it. I displayed my own achievement. I found my own power. Yeah. And I got her out of my life. And I took her back to her mom's house. And, you know, it's like, I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of the fucking cycle. Men get abused in so many ways that are not even acknowledged. They do. I'm tired of this shit. When it's all said and done, when it's all over with, we as a human race will understand that the female of the race has betrayed us, has held the human family hostage, and fucking poisoned the fucking womb, and fucking, like, fucked up the kids. We're going to learn that it was a mistake to trust the female gender. We should treat women the same way that men get treated. We should have equality of treatment. But no. When feminists say that they want equality, in a twisted way, they're actually telling the truth. They want an equality of outcome. Because you notice, all this shit is there to fucking handicap the man and fucking give privilege and preferential treatment to the female. And now what does that say about the female gender? It says that naturally she is unable to compete with the man on equal terms. It says right there, women's own desire for preferential treatment says it's a confession. It is a secret confession to their own inferiority and their own inability to keep up. <clears throat> it's right there, staring you in the fucking face. This fucking bitch right here does fucking damage control in, in trying to keep men and women and everybody from waking up to the real fact that the fucking predator, the enemy of humanity, is right, right there underneath the doll face. It's right there fucking within that porcelain doll that they pass themselves off for. You know what I'm saying? There's your fucking enemy right there. It's female nature. You don't even fucking realize it. Everybody's so fucking addicted to the vagina. Even women want access to the vagina. Why do you think lesbianism is so popular? And I'm not gay bashing because I don't actually hate gays. It's just they're a symptom of the problem. And, and, and gay men are oppressed in so many ways by women. You know what I'm saying? We, need, we, we just need to fucking segregate. Men, men and women just fucking, you know, men just need to do what, what I'm doing right now and fucking, you know, like, voluntarily segregate from women. And, and, so, and then if women want some kind of sexual interaction, they're going to have to get it from their fellow woman. And then they're not going to be happy with it because, well, they will be at first. But then they get tired of it. And then, the, and then they're going to have, and then domestic abuse will be on the rise. And they'll play the victim. And then we can all laugh at them and say, well, but you're being abused by your fellow woman. I mean, didn't you sell us on the lie that domestic, uh, that domestic violence is only evil abuse of men beating on sweetly innocent, helpless women? No, we're going to see it for what it really is. And that's the direction I'm trying to take so many willing volunteers of the men's movement. Rise of the elite MGTOW. Onward into battle, and hopefully with these tools that me and the disposable human doing are creating and all that. But it's not just me. Barbarossa, Stardust, even Girl Writes What? You know, man, woman, myth, we're all great people. We're all intuitive. We're all enlightened. 
And there's other people. There, you know, that cynical cynicism. He does a great job. There's other people. It's not just me doing all this. It's just I'm really fucking pissed, you know. And and I want to find a nonviolent way to actually clean up this fucking mess. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of the abuse. I'm fucking tired of it. I mean, I spent two-thirds of my life serving women with the naive hope that I'll somehow be rewarded for my efforts and all that. These little fucking bitches. It's like they're almost incapable of appreciating anything. Well, of course, because they take everything for granted. Why do they take everything? Because they get everything granted to them because they have a fucking commodity that everybody wants. Let's continue on. Mentally a social one. And we don't usually think of online harassment as a social activity, but we do know from the strategies and tactics that they use that they were not working alone, that they were actually loosely coordinating with one another. And this social, this social component is a powerful motivating factor that works to provide incentives for players to participate, or perpetrators rather, to participate, and um, to actually escalate the attacks by earning the praise and approval of their peers. Ha! Oh, we gotta go to... Hey, 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 Anita, did you know that men are rewarded with praise and all that for brutally, like, destroying other men? Yeah, it's called warfare, and guess what? Oh, yeah, America, we're just, we're just clobbering the Middle East and beating the fuck out of all them, you know, Middle Eastern men and all that, so you women can have privilege there also and be devoid of responsibility. Meh. Look at that. I mean, this war on terror, we're just... Unfortunately, we're, we're, we're just destroying the last vestiges of, uh, of any society that actually did have some kind of male authority, in which male authority has been historically granted as a reward for, for you know, male sacrifice, which, you know, you, the female gender, don't comprehend, because that's such an alien type of concept to you, isn't it? I mean, you know... Oh, to go out and defend, you know, the nest in the cave from the angry grizzly bear. Oh, no, send the man out to do it, you know. I need to stay here and make sure the campfire is still going. And man, man, well, my mate, he's dead because the grizzly bear killed him. Well, I guess I'll get in bed with some other guy because, well, I can't work and provide for myself. Look, I'm... I'm not able to. I'm a woman. I'm I'm supposed to be the... My job is to be the cradle of life, not to take risks and sacrifice and and and, and earn my own keep and all this other stuff. Man, come on. Reward me. I want to be the winner. Man. <clears throat> Continuing on. Like, we can kind of think of this as um, an informal reward system where players earn internet points for increasingly brazen and abusive attacks. Then they would document these attacks and they would bring them back to the message boards as evidence to show off to each other, kind of like trophies or achievements. So, we have this general structure of a social game, right? We have the players, we have the villain, we have the battlefield, we have you know this informal reward system. But the thing is, it's not a game. It's an overt display of angry misogyny on a massive scale. <laughs> yeah, feminism is misogyny. So why do you spread and perpetuate it, Anita? Here's another thing. You know what? You feminist now, you're going to use this as an excuse. You're going to see this and it's like, what happened to men? Or, you know, men did this to women. Let's be equal. Let's do it to... Well, let's do it to men. And then all this shit's going to fucking perpetuate. You're going to fucking do all this shit. And, and then it's going to really happen on a really large scale. And then, you know what happens? It's like, well, now men are victimized women and harmed women. Well, I guess men are just getting what's coming to them. And... Mar, mar. You're going to use... A, oh, in this one instance that happened... It's going to turn into have to, to fucking reprisals against a lot of men. Fuck you, Sarkeesian. You're fucking hate monger. You're fucking instigator. You're fucking poop mouth bitch. 
It's an overt display of angry misogyny on a massive scale. It's not just boys being boys. It's not just how the internet works. And it's not just gonna go away if we ignore it. It's really not a game. So what is it then? Well, <laughs> you know, the ironic thing is women usually don't go away whenever you ignore them. They get even more desperate for attention. I know that from personal experience at my jobs. You know, when I'm new to a job, I don't know anybody, so I don't socially soci or social socialize with anybody. I just kind of do my job and just keep to myself so that, you know, there's no reason for the supervisor to fucking ride my back and get me in trouble. You know, oh, <laughs> Man, I remember in the job that I'm currently at, it was like three and a half years ago. Oh, it was a big fucking controversy. They ain't socialized with anybody. And, and all this other shit, you know? This is fucking stupid, you know? It's fucking pathetic, and it's childish. You know, and then this girl that I worked with, she fucking... Me and the, dispo, me and the disposable human doing were talking about this last night or the other day or whatever, in which this girl was so fucking desperate for, for male attention that she fucking squeak her shoes all the time. And, and like, well, she fucking trapped me in the bathroom one time when, when I was cleaning the bathroom and trying to change the, the trash can and all that. You know, she fucking surprised me at the entrance when I was trying to walk out. And uh, <clears throat> this is at the unisex bathroom, you know, the the uh, dual gender bathroom uh, in the workplace. It's actually the customer bathroom. That's why it's, you know, unisex. And, uh, you know, and then I was walking out, you know, because I was changing the trash, and I was, you know, trying to walk out of the doorway, and this chick, you know, she was a teenage girl, you know, what, 17 years old, comes up to me and fucking blocks my path, won't even let me fucking leave, and, like, looks me in the eyes takes a fucking squirt bottle of cleaning solution, aims it at my chest, and acts like she's going to fucking squirt me in the chest. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, what's the fucking point? I mean, what, what purpose does that serve in regards to getting the job done in the workplace to earn a fucking paycheck? No. She fucking wants to be validated, and she'd, she'd fucking flirt with all these guys and get all this male attention and then act like she's a fucking, you know, like she's victimized because of sexual objectification and all this fucking shit. I'm tired of this fucking dead horse beating. I'm tired of this fucking shit. People need to fucking wake up to how this shit happens. The usual terms that we use to describe online harassment, such as cyberbullying, cyberstalking, um, even trolling, don't adequately describe a hate campaign of this scale. What happened to me, and sadly to other women as well, can best be described as a cyber mob. <laughs> Conspiracy theories. And whether it's a cyber mob or a handful of hateful comments, the end result is maintaining and reinforcing and normalizing a culture of sexism, where men who harass are supported by their peers and rewarded for their sexist attitudes and behaviors, and where women are silent. Fuck you, goddamn! They're they're not rewarded by society. They're usually frowned upon. They're not rewarded by the legal system. They're not. No. <clears throat> Anita, you as a fucking vagina with legs, you know, and, and that's how you really see yourself because, like, every time a woman wants to get out of something, she's like, but I'm just a girl. What is a girl? It's a human being that has, you know, the, the cradle of life between its legs. You know, women get the privilege of being human beings. You know, they, they expect to be valued just be, just for existing, you know, and then men are human doings. They're, you know, they're expected to prove their worth and to prove that they're somehow beneficial to society. I mean, look at this shit. I mean, it's, come on, people, wake up. It's a cyber mob. <clears throat> and whether it's a cyber mob or a handful of hateful comments, the end result is maintaining and reinforcing and normalizing a culture of sexism where men who harass are supported by their peers and rewarded for their sexist attitudes and behaviors, and where women are silent. Well, what does she expect? Like, as soon as a man makes a comment on a message board that a woman doesn't like, does she expect some fucking invisible gun to fucking cap that dude and fucking, like, you know, sp spray his brains all over the wall? I mean, like, you know, when a man makes a sandwich comment or just whatever... Is there supposed to be, like, some kind of, like, magically levitating baseball bat that gives them a fucking concussion to the head? I mean, what do these bitches want? I mean, I'm, I'm curious. Maintaining 
and reinforcing and normalizing a culture of sexism where men who harass are supported by their peers and rewarded for their sexist attitudes and behaviors, and where women are silenced, marginalized, and excluded from full participation. <laughs> a boys Whatever. club means no girls allowed. And how do they keep women... And say that's exactly what you're pissed off at. You know what? We're going to go there. We're going there. Yep, we're going there. Yeah, <clears throat> we are going there. Here we go. Curves International, also known as Curves for Women, Curves Fitness, or just Curves, is an international fitness franchise founded, uh, co-founded by Gary Mangina um, and Diane uh, he Heaven, H-E-A-V-I-N. I mean, yeah, Gary, he's just trying to win, you know, Gary's trying to win female approval. <clears throat> And all that. Uh, Curves is said to have uh, 10,000 locations worldwide with an estimated 4 million plus members in October of 2006. In May of 2012, the company's website listed only 3,175 locations in the United States. The company is privately held by its co-founders uh, with corporate offices located in Waco, Texas. Curves Fitness and Weight Loss Facilities are designed specifically for and focused on women. Although in some states, men are allowed to join. <clears throat> wow, it looks like they're pretty damn successful. Uh, estimated uh, um, uh, revenue is uh, $2.63 billion as of 2004. Um, but that's outdated information. <laughs> Curves was founded by Gary Heaven and his wife, Diane. They opened their first Curves in, in Harlingen, Texas in 1992. This new concept of 30-minute fitness, strength training, weight loss guidance, and environment designed for women was immediately successful. So where's the fucking patriarchy to stop it? I mean, come on. Come on, people. Come on. Think. Uh, there's that patriarchy. It's lingering around, and you're going to stop women from enjoying success. Come on. I don't know what's around here somewhere. No, because there is no patriarchy. <clears throat> it's just a conspiracy theory. It's an excuse for women to do their bad behavior and have some kind of Social justification. We're fighting against patriarchy. We're making the world better. Man. See, whenever a woman bitches and pisses and moans, does all kind of dumbassery shit, you know, and, and spews hatred, oh, it's called uh, fighting for justice, right? I mean, you know, feminism, girl power, come on, we gotta level the playing field, right? Whenever a man speaks out uh, about men's issues and how men are, you know, victimized and Oh, he's just being bitchy. He's being bitter and hateful. Man! See, people recognize the behavior is bitter and hateful. Um, you know, they, they recognize, you know, negative behavior and all that, but they seem to be afraid to, you know, speak out again, about it, you know, or speak out against it when women do it. They began to develop plans for franchising the concept, which first... Uh, which, with the first opening in 1995, Curves claims to be the world's largest fitness franchise and was recently organized, uh, or rec uh, recognized as one of the 10 largest franchise companies in the world. Wow, and it's female-centric. It's gynocentric. <clears throat> oh, so there's stuff. Um... Well, we see all these domestic violence. So, let's see, D O O N E S T. Yeah. Oh, look what came up! Women's shelter. When I try to type in domestic violence shelter, you've seen it on here. All right, a women's shelter is a place of temporary refuge. You know, the, the somewhat permanent. 
Women's shelter is a temporary, uh, how I know about this is because my former owner lives in a shelter. You know, she's been living in a shelter for at least a year because her, her own mom won't even take her in, you know, because, well, my former owner, you know, my former girlfriend, like, she has this, this, this tendency to get kicked out of every place she's ever lived in because people can't stand to be with her because she's so toxic and hostile and manipulative and people get tired of the shit. <clears throat> Plus, if she lives with my mom, she'll drag my kid along with her. And um, and then, you know, he'll be exposed to smoke all the time. Because get this, get this, get this. There's three smokers in the household. None of them will fucking step outside to light up a cigarette, you know, so that my kid can have clean air to breathe. Yeah. These people have no fucking conscience. And guess what? That is the background that my kid's mom comes from. And that's the shit my kid is subjected to because of fucking girl power. So fuck you, fucking feminist pieces of shit. A woman's shelter is a place of temporary refuge and uh, and support for women escaping violent and abusive situations such as rape and domestic violence. There needs to be, uh, you know, it needs to be, you know, uh, there needs to be a shelter for all people who are victims of, you know, uh, of, um, these sorts of things, but no, 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 it won't happen, because, well, after all, men can't be victims, because they're too busy being the perpetrators, man. Oh, look at this, look at this. The first women's domestic violence shelter in the United States, built in 1877. Wow, that's well, that's, that, that, that you know, that that's like really very much during the time of the supposed patriarchy when it was at the strongest. That's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, and it's just one of the first domestic violence shelters. See, the, the fucking feminist conspiracy theory is just so fucking flawed. Now, <clears throat> um, having the ability to leave a situation of violence is valuable for those who are under attack such as such situations frequently involve an imbalance of power that eliminates the victim's financial options. <laughs> what what about what I did to my former owner? I mean, I kicked out my girlfriend so that like I can't be abused anymore. Oh, but she gets put in a in a in a shelter, a women's shelter, so you know, to to have a safe way to leave. Um, you know, um, uh, you know, so that, so that somebody like me wouldn't have power over, you know, the woman's financial options. Why would men even have financial power over women anyway? Well, fuck, maybe because women expect men to earn all the fucking money. You know, what if a man gets tired and says, Hey, bitch, why don't you fucking do your half of the, you know, why don't you do your fair fucking share of, of, of bringing bread into the fucking household? You know? When does that happen? You know, like... You know, a man could, could provide, you know, for a household for, let's say, two years. You know? You know, let's say if a man and woman decide to live with each other for, for two years. Well, two years have transpired since, uh, you know, man and woman, you know, decide to live with each other, whether they're married or just dating or whatever the case may be. You know, a man does it for the first two years of the relationship, and then he's like, you know what, we need to have real equality. And then he expects the woman to provide even for just six months. What's the reaction? Deadbeat layabout asshole. He just wants to lay around on the couch and watch TV. How dare that motherfucker? Man. He needs to stop being so fucking lazy. He needs to get his ass a job. I don't need a fucking layabout deadbeat. Uh, man, I deserve better than that. Man, man, man. All this fucking shit. Look, look, like for fucking more than a year. For more than the, you know, for like, oh gosh, it must be a year and a half or whatever that my, um, former owner, my former girlfriend was living with me, who fucking paid the bills? Well, for the, you know, you know, we live in this apartment here, who paid all the rent all by himself without even asking for help 
to, to pay the rent, me. Who paid the phone bill, me. Oh, who paid the internet bill, me. Yeah, oh, uh, television, yeah, mm-hmm. my, on, yeah, on my end of it. Uh, who paid for the fucking car, you know, the, the car insurance, me, yeah. Who, uh, who, who paid for the gas for the car, me. Who, who bought everything that, that, that food stamps wouldn't buy, me. Yeah. Who worked the job, me, you know. Who, who who bought the DVD movies that, that she went and watched? Who, who bought all the shit? Me, because I worked the fucking job. You know what I'm saying? You know, fuck, I could at least expect from some fucking sex for it, which I got, but, you know, that was, you know, a poison pill because I got sexually exploited and got fatherhood forced upon me by her because she wanted fucking, she wanted validation. I mean, you know, yeah, she wanted a fucking meal ticket from the state, you know, the fucking welfare, food stamps, WIC, uh, all these social services, all this shit. Yeah, she wanted that, but what was the higher priority is for her to actually have kids. I got the, you know, I, I mean, I remember talking to her on the phone where she's like, if I lose my kids, it'll kill me. And that's what she actually said. I mean, she's so fucking petty and pathetic. She wanted the children so she can be validated because what is a woman's most significant contribution to society? Well, it's bearing children. It's having kids and becoming a mother, you know. A mother is held in such high regard. What's the man's ultimate sacrifice or, you know, what's his ultimate role? You know, protector, provider, and, you know, risk his health and safety and well-being to provide for a woman. Look at how fucking biased that transaction works. You know, women hate disposability. You know, well, they they love imposing it upon men because well, it's just you know, women are sociopaths, naturally socio sociopaths, inherently selfish. They're the all-consuming self. Um. And uh, you know, in order for them to get what they want, somebody has to pay the price. Uh, women, they 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 like for men to be invisible. That's why they love the power to fucking like friend zone a man. And all that. They, they just love power. They're fucking power-hungry fucking terroristic bitches. You know? Why, why did we men ever trust them? You know what I'm saying? Women are the predator beneath the doll face. And <clears throat> so anyway, um, so um, So, okay, um, yeah, okay, but women hate being invisible, and they hate being disposable. They act like it's a fucking crime against humanity. They act like it's, like, almost the ultimate, you know, the, the ultimate victimhood. I mean, it's like, it's like the shit that they, you know, it's like they won't even speak about it so, you know, very much because they don't want to give anybody the idea to do it against them, you know what I'm saying? That they are so afraid. You know, matter of fact, I assure you that a woman is more afraid of being ignored and and you know regarded as you know and, and made disposable. She is more afraid of being ignored and disposable than she ever is of getting punched in the face and having her teeth knocked down her throat or having a broken leg or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You need to understand what women really fear. And I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You know that? I'll, 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 I'll share that. Because women have fucking unleashed the fucking plague that destroys men. Where women basically have gotten men to basically commit suicide. You know, it happened to the disposable human doing. It happened to me. We know. We've been hurt to the very fucking core. You know what I'm saying? Did you know for a man to even be accused of rape, did you know it actually hurts him more than the idea of dying on the battlefield unrecognized as, you know, a missing in action soldier? Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that being labeled as a, as a, as a child rapist you know, did you know that just being accused of raping a child will actually hurt a man more than coming back home from a war in a body bag? You see, all the time, so many men, they want to prove their valor and come back in a body. It used to be really common. You know, they you know die for the country and all that. You know, it's like... 
I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna spill the beans. I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking reveal this shit. I'm tired of the fucking oppression that women have done to men. Anyway, um Okay, what are we looking at here? Um Ha! Look at this funding. Most of women, most of funding for women's shelters in the United States comes from the federal government. Wow! Who pays in the most taxes? Well, men, of course, because after all, men earn more money than women. So men naturally have to pay more taxes. So men are the producers. Plus, look how many more women, um, how many more men are expected to be employed than women. Women always have that option of employment. Well, they can always just sit home and watch Sally Jesse Raphael, or they can always watch Jerry Springer, or they can always watch. The, well, look at the soap operas, an entire television industry that exists only for the purpose. I mean, centrally for the purpose of appealing to women's desires to have something interesting to watch on on television and look these these things have been going on since the 1960s fuck i mean look at these some of them some of the ones from the 60s and the 70s are still around after multiple decades you know what i'm saying obviously there's some kind of market in which to sustain this stuff men don't watch this shit not in mass not on a large scale it's women Okay, most funding for women's shelters in the United States comes from the federal government at about an average of 40 to, 40 to 50% as of 2010. These grants are administered through the Office on Violence Against Women. Fuck. Department of Health and Human Services. Many states have had to cut their funds to women's shelters. In 2009, Governor Schwarzenegger of California cut all state funding to domestic violence programs. Fuck, maybe Schwarzenegger got, you know, he got a little bit smart to, like, the fucking, you know, the, the fucking scandals that go on in this shit where it's just, and look, it's pretty much only women that can work in these places anyway. <clears throat> um, like, look, look at this, office of, yeah. And, uh, Violence Against Women Act. Are you serious? Are you fucking shitting me? Violence Against Women Act. All this other kind of shit. Hey, now look. I'm trying to look for related topics. Do, do, do I see, you know, Violence Against Men Act? New rape shield law. Do I, you know, do I, do I see some kind of equivalent, you know, to protect all the men who get their penises chopped off like Catherine Q. Becker did to her husband? No, of course not. Ooh, rape shield laws. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Barbarossa talks about that quite a bit. <clears throat> you know, where women... You know, because only women can be raped. You know, they, they basically, it makes it impossible to fucking determine whether or not the, the accuser is lying. It just fucking destroys the rule of law and the purpose for why we even have laws in this country anyway. I mean, don't people even understand, like, fuck... And then they called it constitutional? Oh, well, well, that's weird, because I thought the Constitution was specific about the right of, you know, the accused to face their accuser. You know, because of what the, you know, what the, you know, the, the British, you know, king had done to the colonies and all that. You know, I'm fucking sick of this shit. I'm sick of this. All right, we got to continue on with this. And where women are silenced, marginalized, and excluded from full participation. A boys club means no girls allowed. And only that ex ex express, you know, only in that explicit fucking venue, not abroad. And how do they keep women and girls out? Just like this. By creating an environment that is too toxic, sorry, 
by creating an environment that is too toxic and hostile to endure. Oh, isn't that what your gender does in the fucking workplace? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of double standards there. And toxic. You, you know, you... No, look at all the fucking liability and litigation that goes on in the fucking workplace where women, like, dominate. You know, with all the fucking sexual harassment allegations and all kind of shit. Look, I mean, in the fucking county jail in the town in which I live, back in 2008, there's this big fucking scandal about how supposedly the sheriff... It's basically a patriarchy conspiracy theory type of fiasco where it's like, what? I, I read it in the fucking newspaper. It was pathetic. What evil sheriff? He, he was, he was in, you know, he was, he was there at the, at the, you know, at the justice center and he, he brandished a gun in front of these, these women who worked there and then he, he took his hands and stuck them down her pants and, he he sexually assaulted these women and and and, and grabbed their their chest and, and 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 did it while he was brandishing his gun and holding his gun in his hand and and, my, 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 and all this fucking shit and he lost his job eventually it turned into a whole fucking mess and like you know and, and look at how much fucking money these two women got out of it. A fuck ton of money. Fucking dozens of thousands of dollars. You know what I'm saying? You know? Like... Who, who the... Come on! There's fucking cameras in that place. Who the fuck does that shit? I mean, it's like a fucking made-for-TV movie. And this happened less than fucking five miles from where I live. Matter of fact, it wasn't even three miles from where I live. You know what I'm saying? It's pathetic. It's fucking made up, concocted fucking bullshit. Who the, who the fuck would even risk their job to do that shit? Oh, because he was the sheriff. He was a male authority figure in power. And he just, he just couldn't resist the temptation to abuse power. Man, he's just, oh, he's victimizing these really innocent women. Oh my gosh, they, as women, they had no way to defend themselves. Man, man. <laughs> just trying to act like a woman, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to understand how they think. Now, this is pretty grim and depressing stuff, I know. Just but like your life. To all of this. Do you want to know what happened to my fundraiser after all of that? Oh, do tell. Well, first, the cyber mob failed to silence me. Of course. evidence by me being here today. But because we're actually, we live in a matriarchy, and, you know, when, when the vagina cries, everyone, everyone, you know, listens, and everyone, you know, just flocks to, to help the vagina feel better about itself so we can all exist as a society so that, you know, the vagina won't stop, you know, uh, popping out babies. Oh, was that was that was that a largely uh, female audience I just saw there? I'm here today. Thank you. Female dominated audience. Look at it. Just preaching to the choir. A few brainwashed men, you know. One right there. Oh, oh, look, there, there's a man. One of the few ones you'll see in the audience. Quite a few people are actually interested in a project that would deconstruct the representations of women in games, and hmm. who are totally outraged at the harassment that too often plagues our gaming communities. What, what, what would you? What, what the fuck did you just say? Our gaming communities? No, it's fucking the male gaming community because the male fucking built it. Fuck you, Sarkeesian. You know what, bitch, before you even born, the only people who would even write program code and go through the tedious fucking task of, of software design were men. Then when it got fucking easy enough with all these rapid application development tools, 
Then, then women got involved. And then when video games got simple, simple enough, oh, then, only then when something becomes simplified and all the bugs are worked out and all the kinks have been ironed and, and, and everything is as risk-free as possible, then, only then, after men have done the work of, of perfecting something, then women jump on the fucking bandwagon and then call it theirs. Fuck you, cunt. Actually raised 25 times what I initially asked for. Yeah, let's hear that again. I'm totally outraged at the harassment that too often plagues our gaming communities. I actually raised 25 times what I initially asked for. Look at it right there. 168,000, well, 158,922 dollars estimated at nearly a hundred and sixty thousand dollars fucking all you gotta do is cry fucking fa the vagina just has to cry and then massive amounts of resources will be diverted toward the vagina's direction it's fucking manipulative fucking predator she's a predator nearly seven thousand individuals contributed to make my tropes versus women in video games project bigger and better and more expansive than I could ever have imagined. So, 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 did, so you made the project, right? You, you spent that money on making the project, right? I mean, you said it was going to be done by the end of August, right? You know, let, 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 let's go, let, like, let's go there. Um, oh, uh, like, Yeah, let's go there. Okay, here we go. We're going to see her four-minute video where she said she promised all this shit for all the, you know, for all the money she was taking in. Have you ever noticed that with a few notable exceptions, basically all female characters in video games fall into a small handful of cliches and stereotypes? I'm Anita Sarkeesian, and I run the video web series Feminist Frequency. As a pop culture critic, I look at movies, TV shows, comic books, and, of course, video games. In addition to being loads of fun to play, research has found that gaming can improve problem-solving skills, teamwork, creative thought, and multitasking, and improve hand-eye coordination and enhance perceptual and cognitive abilities. Unfortunately, in addition to all of these benefits, many games tend to reinforce and amplify sexist and downright misogynist ideas about women. In this particular project, which I'm calling Tropes vs. Women in Video Games, I'm going to create a series of five videos that look at and deconstruct the most common and the most stereotypical representations of women in games. Video games are an integral and growing part of our popular culture today. And as with all pop culture media, the gaming industry is playing a role in helping to shape our society, either by challenging or more often reinforcing existing values, beliefs, and behaviors. This new video series will primarily focus on tracking five stereotypical representations of women throughout the history of video games. I'm going to look at the damsel in distress, the fighting toy, the sexy sidekick, the sexy villainess, and the most common trope in video games, women as background decoration. Last year, I released a successful video series called Tropes vs. Women. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Women as background decoration. Women fear invisibility. Look at how... Look, look at... Look, look at the ornaments. Look at the ornaments right there. Look at the fucking paint job. Here's some more paint right here. You know, here's some shaping. All this shit to try to grab your attention. Right there. Women hate it. Women, women hate being ignored. Realize what's really going on. Look below the surface. Look, look beyond the surface, beneath the surface, whatever. Penetrate with your understanding deep inside and understand and fucking observe the deep-seated issues that this gender right here, the female gender, has where I looked at the reoccurring patterns of separation. 
Last year, I released a successful video series called Tropes vs. Women, where I looked at the reoccurring patterns of the way that women are portrayed in the media. A trope is a common pattern in a story or a recognizable attribute in a character that conveys information to the audience. A trope becomes a cliché when it's overused. Some of the tropes I looked at were the Manic Pixie Dream Girl, the Smurfette Principle, and Women in Refrigerators. Those last two are extremely common in video games as well. You probably guessed by now that this trope was named after the only female Smurf in all of Smurfville. But one day, the evil wizard Gargamel decided on a devilish plan to sabotage Smurfdom. And how will he do that? Yes, that's right. By creating a female Smurf. Ah. I'll get them through their hearts. I will send them a Smurfette. What I try to do in my videos is give people the language to understand and talk about issues of gender and... You notice how she just used that, that media that, that from the cartoon? A Smurfette through their hearts. I will send... She actually... See, this is what me and the disposable human doing, we get so pissed off about. Anita Sarkeesian, because she's got fucking vaginal privilege, uses video clips from, like, copyrighted media. There's the Boomerang logo right there. This is Smurfs, and it's owned by, I believe it's Hanna-Barbera. And <clears throat> it's copyrighted material. I would just embed that in the video and have, like, no consequences. Fuck. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then a Smurfette. What I try to do in my videos is give people the language to understand and talk about issues of gender and sexism using accessible examples from popular culture. Feminist frequency videos have been used in middle school, high school, and university classrooms. They've been integrated into the curriculum of media studies, gender studies, and law school programs. Basically all the non-productive shit that fucking congests the system and waste resources. I mean, look at that. That's the problem right there. Look at how uh, th this bitch claims to be a fucking victim and, and ignored and, and fucking marginalized and all this shit. And look at how fucking successful she is. I mean, look at the fucking predator beneath the doll face. Come on, people. Oh, my gosh. It just, you know, it, it, it's like it, it's like fucking Bill Gates walking around telling everybody that he's fucking homeless and poor. Everybody knows it ain't true. You know what I'm saying? You know, he, he's often regarded as, like, the richest man in the country or sometimes the richest man in the world or whatever. You know, it's like him saying that he's broke and don't have any money and, and can't even afford to eat out of the fucking snack machine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just because he said it don't mean it's true. Parents have even reached out to me saying that they use my videos to spark discussions with their kids about representations of women in the media. Uh-oh. What happens when something in Heart Lake City catches on fire? I guess you'd have to call the boys to put it out. Usually, because women don't want to go in and fucking get caught on fire. No, they want to be they want to be in the parade, wearing the uniform, and and awarded, and and get the fucking steady paycheck and all this shit. But you know, who wants to come out fucking scarred for life? You know, oh well, you know, somebody's got to do it. Might as well be the men, right? Of course. Similarly, what happens when someone in Lego City gets hungry? I guess you'd have to call the girls to bake them something. Oh, it's so horrible that there's some kind of, you know, mutually beneficial exchange that that one gender is better at than the other. Oh, well, that's oppression. Each video in this new series will be between 10 and 20 minutes long. With What's well that? Research, you have to call the girls to bake them something. Each video in this new series will be between 10 and 20 minutes long with well-researched, in-depth analysis. Yeah, but... As with all feminist frequency videos, these will be available online for free for everyone and anyone to watch, share, and use. In each video, I'll also be sure to showcase some inventive and interesting games that manage to avoid these harmful tropes. As you might imagine, this project requires an enormous amount of research, because I'm not just looking at a handful of games or just the worst offenders, but at hundreds of games and hundreds of different characters across all genres. This is an incredibly ambitious project because of the scope and scale of the research and production involved. So please donate any amount you can to bring this video series to life. Go check out the Kickstarter page where you can see all the details about how the project is continuing to evolve, including seven new bonus videos and a classroom curriculum. There you can also pledge a donation to help support this project. Just click on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching this video and for your continued support of my work. Hmm. All right. All right, back to this. Okay. 
And she said her original goal was, you can see it here, $6,000. Now, she believed that $6,000 would be enough money to finance this very elaborate and very, very extensive project. You heard her say it, you know, this big, massive project. It's going to take a lot of research and a lot of time and effort and just, my. So she thought $6,000 would be enough to do it, right? That was her judgment call. Well, it might be enough, you know, I don't know. It just depends on, you know, what equipment is needed to get the type of results that she needs or, 